In this video, we'll continue developing the idea of the moments of a probability distribution, generalizing from the first moment or expectation value that we saw in a previous video. So moments can be thought of as quantities which encode information of a probability distribution. And in theory, if you could determine all of the moments of a bound probability distribution, then you would know everything there is to know about that distribution. So these are uh, important quantities to build to calculate as they can tell you a lot about the shape, uh, spread, and uh, general uh, properties of a probability distribution. So we can define the nth moment of a random variable X as the expectation value of our random variable raised to the power N, where N is an integer, a positive integer. And once again, for a discrete random variable, this is given by a sum of the probabilities of each, uh, probabilities of each uh, value multiplied by uh, the corresponding value raised to the power of n. Or in other words, it's the sum of the products of the observations raised to a power n times the probabilities of uh, occurrences of these observations. So this is for a discrete random variable. And for a continuous random variable, we need to transform our sum into an integral. And again, it's still a sum over the probability of occurrences times the, um, the products of observations raised to the power of n. And this is for a continuous random variable. And we've already come across one of these, the first moment, which we said was the expectation value and is equivalent to the mean or average value of a distribution and some measure of the central tendency of observations. We can, uh, it's sometimes also useful to define what's known as central moments. This is sometimes denoted by C sub N. And this is the expectation value of our random variable with uh, a random variable minus the mean or expectation value of our distribution raised to the power of N. Okay, so it's basically the, the moment about the mean is uh, a central moment is the moment about the mean. And this is again given by an analogous formula. So now because we're doing it, we're calculating the moment about the mean, we just replace the value of xi by xi minus the mean. It's for the discrete case. And again, for the continuous case, we need to replace the sum by an integral. This is for 
a continuous random variable. So the most common central moment that you may be already familiar with is the second central moment. which is also known as the variance of the distribution. And this gives you a measure of the spread of uh, observations uh, from the average or about the mean. This is usually denoted by sigma squared. And perhaps the more common uh, quantity that's used is the standard deviation, which is sigma. And this is given by the square root of the variance. So this also gives you, this still gives you a measure of the spread of observations, but typically with the same units as the mean. So this is often the more uh, useful quantity and will sometimes denote the variance by bar of x. So rather than calculating the variance by evaluating this integral with uh, n is equal to 2, There is an easier way of evaluating this, which comes from simplifying this expression. If we expand out the, uh, the brackets here, then you get x squared minus 2x u plus mu squared. And because the expectation value is a, uh, an integral, it's a distributive operation. So we can split it up amongst every component in our brackets. So this is equivalent to calculating the expectation value of x squared. Because two and mu are constants, you can take them out of the integral so they end up outside expectation value of dx. And the expectation value of a constant is just a constant uh, for a normalized probability distribution. Okay, so if you want to see it explicitly, uh, if this is a constant, then you're just left with the integral from minus infinity to infinity of your probability distribution function, which would be equal to one if it's normalized. So this remains as the expectation value of x squared. This is just the expectation value of x is just the mean. We have minus two mu squared. And then mu squared over here. And this simplifies to the expectation value of x squared minus the mean squared. This gives you the variance. So you can see that rather than evaluating this complicated integral, we're left with evaluating a sim simpler integral of just uh, the second moment. And then by subtracting the mean squared, we can recover a value for the variance. So we can do uh, an example to see how this works in practice. So again, sticking with our example of the one as electron in hydrogen, we would like to calculate the variance for the radial position. of the 1s electron in hydrogen. So 
the variance of the radial position is given by the second central moment with our radial probability distribution function for the 1s electron. And we had over here that the variance is equivalent to calculating the second moment and subtracting the mean squared. So we're going to simplify this by calculating the second moment over here and subtracting the mean squared. We have previously found that the average radial distance of the 1s electron was given by 3 halves of the Bohr radius. So this leaves us with our second moment. minus the mean squared. And if you uh, go through the calculation of this integral, you should find that the variance is three quarters of the Bohr radius squared for the 1s electron. Perhaps a more intuitive scale can be gained from looking at the standard deviation, which we said was the square root of the variance. And this is equal to square root of three divided by two times the Bohr radius. So remember the standard deviation gives you uh, a measure of the spread of observations about the mean. So this tells you uh, sort of how likely you are to find the, uh, not, not exactly how likely, but a measure of how, how likely you are to find the electron away from the mean. So this is the, this illustrates the importance of the second central moment of a probability distribution and the physical context of calculating probabilities in quantum mechanics. In the next video, I'll introduce two more moments that are uh, often useful in gaining further insight uh, into the characteristics of a probability distribution function.